warm welcome to this evening of in conversations now to this today's uh, conversation is going to be about the fabric of a healthy society uh, as you would have observed rightly so far in the last 6 months we have been talking about yoga in the personal front uh, how an individual can excel and do well within his or her own capabilities and now the next immediate step is how the individual can contribute to the society and collectively how they can all uh, go forward together. So today it's going to be that uh, before we get into the conversations and uh, the deep conversations, I request Swamiji to take us through the Santi part. Request all the participants to keep their audios in mute and if possible, keep the videos on so that we'll have a uh, nice uh, conversation as uh, as close to the real one as possible. Over to you, Swamiji. Namo Narayan and a very warm welcome to all the participants for today's session. Let us begin with Shanti Pat. Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in Dnyan or Chin Mudra, head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line, eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your breath. Normal, spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. I am breathing in and I am breathing out. And I am aware. I know I am breathing in. I know I am breathing out. Let this be the form of your awareness for some time. Shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, Brumadhya. And at the Brumadhya, visualize the form of either your Guru or your Ishtadevata or a brightly burning candle flame. And maintaining your connection with this image at the eyebrow center, we shall chant the mantra Om three times altogether, followed by Shanti mantras. Take a deep breath in. Oh. 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 Together, Om Sahana Vavato Sahana Bhunakto Sahavir Yankar Vavahai. Tejas vina vadita mastu ma ved vishavahai om shanti 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 hi hari hi om hari om tatsat gently rub your palms against each other place them on the floor guys Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes, energizing your eyes, energizing the brain, energizing the whole body. 
and then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om, Tat Sat, Namo Narayan, Jayapur. Namo Narayan Swamiji. Namo Narayan everyone. So today uh, we will be talking about fabric of a healthy society. So uh, as we were talking before the Shanti part, uh, we are now slowly progressing towards yoga and how society is uh, benefited by yoga and yoga maybe if it's benefited by society. We will hear to uh, how Swamiji can put it uh, because this is a very interesting and a very new topic. All the while we were talking about how, I mean, in, in many yoga sessions, we always keep hearing about how individual development is possible with yoga, but how society can be benefited and uh, how uh, we can make it healthy through yoga is something really interesting and novice. So uh, I request Swamiji to uh, take it over and uh, we have so many questions Swamiji first of all even before you uh, take it uh, into the deep conversation I would want to understand what the society is in this in, in what terms we should understand and what is the aim of a society how a society is formed what exactly do you mean by society when you say healthy society and fabric of healthy society well, before we begin, I would like to know from the audience, what do we understand when we use this word, oh, things are not going in well in the society. Is this how one should behave in the society? Society is progressing. The society has made so many discoveries and progressed. So what do we actually mean by society? I would like somebody from the audience to give their opinion, their view. What do you understand by the word? Simaji, unmute yourselves. Swamiji, it means there is a, an imbalance uh, in social relationship and the interaction among the systems and there should be harmony. Mm -hmm. No, but uh, what does society mean? What does society mean? Society means a system, system of social relationship or uh, behavior patterns, interaction among the systems mm -hmm. in sociological view. And society means a, uh, meaningful relations among the among every uh, aspect of society. Again, you are so, using uh, the word society to define society. Uh, organizations, institutions, uh, the groups, uh, the relations, uh, okay. the relations, the system and interaction. Wonderful. You have brought very nice uh, points uh, to the table. Anybody else would like to uh, uh, share something different? So, Miji, in my, my opinion, my simple opinion, I mean, the society means what I see around when I travel by train, when I travel by bus, what I see in the advertisements of newspaper, now there are no newspapers, so TV advertisements, or whatever um, we see around, we hear around, even WhatsApp groups also different, what they write about, and uh, different magazines, and different debates on TV. So what they talk about is called the society, in my opinion. And actually, when I went to the America, I really was very wonderstruck that in at least whatever uh, cities I visited, that in each every corner, there were yoga classes. Either Vikram yoga, Vikram yoga classes, casual yoga classes, yoga classes, something special yoga classes, yoga studios. And so I was so uh, impressed that so many yoga classes we don't find here also. Even when I was sitting on the street with eyes closed doing pranayam, some people made a point and they said, Mataji, Mataji. And they made me open the eyes, pranam. So I was so much uh, surprised. I think this is called society. So in a place where uh, yoga is not practiced, that is not called as society? No, I mean, society means 
what I saw people's interaction in person. Yes. I call as very, nice. very nice. Beautiful. Thank you. So, Thank Swamiji? You. Yes. Yeah. Swamiji. Yeah. It's again, I think it's been said it's an organized system, people coming together as a group. Beautiful. And it's not individual. It is common laws, common, common system, common regulations, establishing certain ways of living as a group. Yeah. Is, uh, a group. Uh, I would look at. Yeah. Man I'm living in interdependence. Very nice. Beautiful. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So, we have established what a society is. I would look at it in this manner. An individual strand is able to do some activity, but you pull it and it will break. But if there are 20, 30, 40 strands which come together, they become a rope. And no matter how hard I try to pull it, I cannot break it. So coming together of like-minded individuals working with common laws, common guidelines, common directions, common objectives, strengthens each of the string or strand of that unit, allowing that unit to achieve much more than what it could have individually achieved. So that is what a society is. Coming together of individuals bound by common laws, common guidelines. Laws are basically guidelines. So that is what society is. And that is the necessity of the society because an individual can be capable, but the capability of an individual cannot match the in capability of multiple people coming together, multiple units coming together, and that becomes stronger. So that inherently is a society. What we spoke, what all of you mentioned, that this is a nice society, this is how a society should be, that is a slightly advanced version of society where people have come together and on that basis you have the foundation and the building on basis of that foundation the first story then the second then the third then the fourth is built so we are at that level where we are building stories one over the other but at the basis the idea is multiple individuals who might be different th than each other they come together, they are bound by common guidelines, they share a common objective and they proceed to achieve more than what they individually could. That in itself is the definition, I would say, and an understanding of society. Why is society important? Society is very essential because it allows us to explore our abilities. It allows us to strengthen ourselves, increase our capabilities, achieve more and additionally allow others to also achieve more. So it becomes a win-win scenario, a synergistic approach where all of us are able to achieve much more than what we would have able to do individually. This is what society is. What was the other part of your question, uh, Chitra? Uh, aim of society, Swamiji, I think that is covered already. Uh, so maybe we could go to the part that why why but, health uh, comes into picture. I would like to discuss a little bit more about the aim of the society. We have till now spoken 
about the general concept of society that individuals come together and they will help each other grow better but what does better mean this is something which i feel we need to understand 6 months as you were mentioning rightly of looking at individual progress individual improvement individual all those abilities uh tells us something it tells us that we are not just his body we are not just his mind we are something way beyond and just becoming aware of that gigantic unimaginable ability of ours which is not visible just now does not take us away from the activities which we are doing but allows us to enjoy these activities in a better manner if i am able to have the taste of a simple sweet which is a very roughly prepared very hastily prepared not so beautifully prepared sweet say gulab jamun say malpua say ras malai whichever sweet you want to take and if you are able to have the same delicacy which is prepared by an expert chef both are enjoyable which would you enjoy better which would you enjoy better the chef made one the chef made one the expert why because it is made better and you are able to know the difference between the two in the same way when we connect to that higher source our perspective improves and then we are able to enjoy the same thing in much greater dimension on a longer period otherwise i eat the sweet and then two months later i have diabetes or i eat the sweet and six hours later i have got diarrhea so this is something which we need to understand we need to connect to that higher source within us and unlock the infinite potential which is within us from a normal individual we have to try and become a superman a superwoman a super person because that is possible for each and every one of us having said this now we have to apply this in the social context i as an individual am progressing but i cannot progress at the cost of others if i progress at the cost of others sooner or later it is going to trouble me i am sitting in an air conditioner in air conditioned room and the way i create the air condition is i suck out all the heat and throw it out and outside because the heat is being thrown out it is getting hotter and warmer and more difficult for people how long can i stay in such a room sooner or later those people are going to break down the walls and damage my air condition system so there has to be a system wherein i can enjoy with others that is the concept of a progressed society a developed society and the joys 
the happinesses which we undergo they are temporary and they give us joy today and take it away from us tomorrow and then we are left with greater pain greater sorrow greater tension greater whatever so is there a way that we can have greater joy yes yoga shows us the way spirituality shows us the way now how can we translate that into the society that is what is essential and to do that society has got to have two types of aims the first aim is to be able to allow the individual to grow so that the best possible abilities are nourished nurtured and explored and having done that having reached the pinnacle of external progress we then should move towards the internal progress because without internal progress external progress will be stunted in the same manner as the progress will be stunted if the roots are not nurtured if the roots are not watered the growth of the tree is going to be stunted the tree no matter how much effort we put will start wilting away drying away and one day fall off if the roots are not nourished that is the second aspect the roots are the source what is our source this entire body this personality it derives its energy its abilities from the source what are those roots the, those roots are our spiritual self so the second type of aim of society is to allow us to connect to that unseen part of our self which in fact is our real essence it is through that all the manifestation happens it is through that this manifestation can go up if the tree is looking dry and you spray water on the leaf the leaf will come up a bit but again it will start wilting away faster because that water which we have provided is only a temporary solution it does not work well we need to nurture the roots what are our roots that is our spiritual self and when we connect to that root we can improve internally as well as externally and such a society becomes a pragat a pragalbha society a progressed and profound society that in my opinion these two are the main aims of any society external growth and internal growth so a society is necessary for us to improve our abilities and having improved our abilities it is essential that we connect to that other aspect which is not visible and work towards it so the other aspect of society is to make us aware of this and provide us means provide us uh, environment that we can do this simultaneously that i would say is the aim of society chitra you were saying something uh, no swami ji i was only trying to uh, uh, take the two important points and reiterate because uh, so much of uh, uh, inner meaning has been said so i just wanted to ask you what are the two things one is internal one is external and uh, the spiritual growth of individual along with the common society uh, this is what is a aim Th- those Did two are right? main, you see uh, the the individual needs to grow externally and internally 
until and unless we don't grow internally, external growth is not going to be permanent and won't be able to give the same flavor as. So this is the balanced growth of an individual, which is essential. And when the balanced growth of an individual takes place, so in the same example of our rope, if we have a strand, now if magically from a strand of cotton, we can, uh, you know, uh, transform that strand of cotton to a strand of steel. What is the ability of this rope? That ability has grown exponentially. So the individual grows, the society also grows. So this cohesiveness, this synergy, not only in the external world, but also in the internal world. Now, I have no idea. My parents did not tell anything to me. My friends did not say anything to me. My teachers did not say anything to me. My uh, colleagues did not say anything to me. And I grew externally. And after growing externally, at some point, I had started feeling, in spite of all my achievements, I feel restless. I feel disgruntled. I feel, oh, something is missing in my life. And one person feels it, another person feels it, third person feels it. Multiple people feel this. The society becomes a disgruntled place. But nobody knows, why am I disgruntled? Oh, I have enough money, I have enough food, I have enough everything which I would expect to need. But still, I am unhappy. The other aspect of society is to provide this direction, this guidance. How did, how did I learn ABCD? Did I uh, discover the alphabet? Did I discover, you know, did I start from zero and move ahead? No. My ancestors did that and I am standing on their shoulders and moving ahead. The same way as we are doing this for the external growth. Systems need to be in place so that the internal growth can also take place. Here it is very essential to understand this internal growth does not mean renunciation. There is a, a common myth that, oh, if you want to grow internally, that means you need to renounce. I'm not speaking of renunciation. I'm speaking of a balanced growth. The inside also grows and the outside also grows. Together, there is a balanced growth. So external, the society is doing things. The society is more or less in place. But the internal, that is not very much in place. And that creates a dissonance in the society. That making it available, that is the second function or aim of society. Understood, Swamiji. Thank you. Uh, and... Uh... Like you were saying, is a developed society and healthy society same? Would development mean health? Or when you are saying health, you know, fabric of a healthy society. What is a healthy society before we understand what is a fabric? How do we define health for the society? We have defined society as an interaction between individuals based on common guidelines, common directions. Now, if the interactions are not benefiting both the interact interactors, it is going to be either a lose-win situation or it is going to be a win-lose situation or a lose-lose situation, right? Which means that net benefit is either limited or there is a big downside. So when the net benefit is less and the problems arising due to such interactions in the society increase, then the health of the society is going down. If I can, in the worst case scenario is lose-lose. That is the ultimate tamasic 
situation win lose or lose win that means i win you lose you lose i win that is the rajasic situation but when it is win win it is sattvic i also win you also win because if you see i feel if he progresses i am going to lose out no that is not what happens if he progresses or she progresses i can also progress and maybe i can progress better when that level comes in then that is a a uh, pinnacle of health in a society now this principle can be applied at multiple levels and at different times we have sometimes there is a win win sometimes there is a win lose sometimes there is a lose win sometimes there is a lose lose so the net result of all of this when that is in the positive then that is the healthy society and when it is in the negative that is a less healthy or unhealthy society and as i have said it is on the external dimension as well as internal dimension if it is not on both the dimensions then it is not going to be a healthy society so what we look at needs to be on both sides just today i was discussing with somebody and they said that soon peace of mind is going to be the most expensive commodity available and i was uh, you know reminded because pithadishwari swami satyasanganand ji has often said that that today we have received enough earning money is not a major issue luxuries comforts happinesses external objects are not a major issue of course there is always going to be an issue in there but not a major issue but happiness and peace of mind is becoming a very big problem so when that is coming in then that indicates that the health of the society is coming down that is what is important and that indicates the health of the society so swami ji how can yoga help uh, is it that we all individually practice principles of yoga and the society can automatically benefit or is there anything that we need to do collectively yes. that is the most important question when we practice yoga we are practicing for our individual self as of now what uh, what we generally understand as yoga but yoga in its basic definition is joining the limited individual to the cosmic and the cosmic is the net sum of all so by that definition yoga means joining me with you with him with her with everybody we are all that cosmic one so the nature of yoga when we are looking it into the society becomes slightly different does not mean that we stop practicing our asan pranayam dharana pratyahar all those activities no we we continue doing that but just by 100 people practicing asanas together is not going to improve the health of the society necessarily to improve the health of the society what is essential is how can we improve the quality of interaction quality of every transaction and that is the reason why swami shivanand ji said adjust adapt accommodate bear insult bear injury highest sadhana highest yoga he has not said that sitting in meditation and doing dhyan is the highest form of yoga no what has he said adjust adapt 
accommodate that's one level you see when we used to go when many 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 years ago when we used to travel to bihar to swami ji's ashram uh we used to go by train and there would be lots of people coming in and the biharis they had a very nice term they would not say adjust they would say i just and there will be on the seat on the bench there will be five people sitting but they will say ha aa jao ji i just ho jayega oh come in we can make adjustment now there was a very nice uh, uh, situation which took place in a railway platform uh, on the railway journey there were uh, it was a unreserved compartment and if you have ever traveled in unreserved compartment you know that as the train comes in everybody is in a mad rush in a frenzy to take the best seat do this that etc etc and it was the same thing and if you take that person somebody will put in the napkin over there or this that the other and they are ready to fight with each other if everything settles i am sitting in my seat you are sitting in your seat and then after one hour or so the person says ha ha why don't you come and sit here he adjusts himself and asks you to sit so both are slightly uncomfortable but together there is a greater comfort and i have seen that everybody fought and got their seat one hour later somebody opened their tiffin shared with couple of people somebody did that somebody did that and after some time every it became a large family where they were all together and they were just making small individual adjustments and the whole journey became very comfortable joyous enjoyable memorable for people they did not remember that individual oh i had to squeeze in and sit like this but they remembered oh wow it was a nice time why because from individual i quietly am eating my own stuff now instead of that i open chalo ye le lo ji and to whom am i sharing with to the same person with whom i was fighting over that seat hey mera jagah nahi lena ka i am sharing with that person and there is another person oh bude baba aa jaiye thoda sa baith jaiye ka what does that mean when you share and that adjustment comes in the joy which comes supersedes any individual difficulties which are there and it becomes memorable joyful and you can remember for years together oh that journey oh it was memorable so that is adjustment by making small individual adjustments we have a collective benefit which benefits everyone it's not that only i enjoyed everyone in that trip had a nice time so that is adjust adapt the situation is not conducive i need to make changes within myself so that i adapt to the situation there is some light which is left on i can't sleep without so uh, if there is light i cannot sleep but i am in a common area what to do i adapt to the situation i just put a cloth or my night uh, uh, cap and i am able to so i have adapted to the situation same slight difference is accommodate you just make some adjustments so that you accommodate that person and together we benefit it is not easy what is the most difficult thing in adjusting adapting or accommodation what is the most difficult thing to do, which becomes a blockade for adjust adapt accommodate ego samiji your ego beautiful beautiful ego there is no other problem 
And what is the aim of all the yogic practices? To transcend the ego. Yeah. So, even without closing your eyes, without concentrating on your nose tape, or standing in Shirshasan, or performing all those uh, complicated, intricate practices, you have achieved the same. You are able to transcend the ego. You are able to cut the ego to size. How? Adjust, adapt, accommodate. But after that, that is not sufficient. It goes beyond that. Bear insult. Bear injury. See, after that, now comes the real sadhana. I am right. I know I have done everything correctly. But still somebody is insulting me. If somebody insults me, what is my first reaction? Oh, I am in the company of great saints. They don't have any reaction when somebody insults them. <laughs> so, Swamiji, we got angry uh -huh. uh, from within. And, uh -huh. inside. and then uh, suddenly, sometimes suddenly we react and sometimes uh, we decide that uh, one day I will answer. That. So, you want to strike back. Pratishodh, revenge, right? So, you want to insult that person. Now, this point, you step back. Bear the insult. He has insulted me. Or she has insulted me, whatever. But I will keep quiet. I will not react. Is it easier to react and hit back? Or is it easier to hold back and remain steady? Easier to react, react, Swamiji. React. Mm -hmm. You react in the moment, in impulse, and repent with leisure. Correct? That time you feel on top of the world. And then for days together, you keep on repenting. Oh, yaar, aise kiya? So, don't act in haste and repent in leisure. No. And even if it is right, let me have the strength, let me have that Atma Sanyam to hold back. He has insulted me, fine. But I decide not to react. I decide to remain calm. I'm not saying that I don't react because he's my boss and my boss I need to listen to, otherwise my job will be gone. No, that is under duress. That is not what is being said over here. What is being said over here is that I decide, I have the option. If my boss insults me, I have to listen to it. I have to chew it and swallow it. But if my subordinate insults me, aha, then my real form comes in. What do you think you are? And everything comes up. No. Bear insult. Remain calm. Out of choice, you are working not only with your ego, but you are working with all your shad ripus, all your six so called friends who ditch you and put you in a spot. You are working with them. That is bare insult. And then the highest aspect is bare injury. Insult to do se baat ho raha hai. Injury. It is coming straight on me, personal. Even then, I will not... What did Christ say? Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is their insult, their injury. It is not out of fear. It is not out of duress. It is not out of compulsion. It is not out of obligation. It is not even out of social goodness. It is a state of mind. Suppose you have a small, your own small child and the child is getting angry and you know, as children are when they are say six months or eight months or one year, something like that. 
and they feel un, un, unhappy. The, the first thing when a child is unhappy, they come and beat the mother. So, do you get upset by that? What have you done? You have forgiven them. You have borne that insult, that injury. You have borne. And you are calm at heart. You are happy at heart. You are not doing it with uh, a grouse in your heart. I have an axe to grind. Okay, today you have done this. Wait for five years and I will get back to you. That is not how. My heart is still joyful. That is how Christ had said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. That child, we say, oh, chane do, usko malum nahi hai kya ho raha hai. It is that connection which has to be worked upon. So, when I implement all the, if you look at this, all the aspects of yoga sadhana are embedded in these activities. You look at Pratyahar, you are having Atma Sanyam. When you have to do bare insult, you have to have Atma Sanyam. You need to have Vivek. No, this is not right. This is to be done. That is to be done. And you need to have largeness and magnanimity of heart. And magnanimity of heart can only come when you are connected to a higher source. You cannot put up a drama for too long. It cracks until and unless you are not connected there. So, connecting to that and that is the aim and that is the way to when you work in this manner, in a systematic manner, it, it, it is, if it is it were so simple, everybody has to bear injur, injury and insult. Everybody would be realized selves. No. They don't know how to convert that external situation into a sadhana. That is what we have to learn. And when we are able to do that, the quality of interaction, just imagine, just imagine that there are two people who are interacting and both are trying to do the same and just adapt, accommodate, bear insult, bear injury. How is their interaction going to be? Tell me. Is there going to be Katuta? Is there going to be bitterness? Is there going to be anger? No. Both together, they are going to try and adjust. Oh, please wait. Huh? I will make this adjustment. for Both are helping each other. And together, the energy just goes up. As I said, in that railway compartment, everybody adjusts to each other. And then somebody says, I have got that upper berth so I can lie down. So I lie down for two hours. And then I see there's another elderly gentleman. I say, Kaka ji, ye, aap thoda sa do rest kar lijiye. And everybody is happy. You see, the quality of interaction improves. And when the quality of interaction improves, there is a higher energy which comes into play. It is this higher energy which makes that experience memorable. It is not just the physical activity. By doing this, we are pulling that higher energy into us. That is the highest sadhana. That is the highest yoga. This is the maxim which Swami Shivananji gave. He has not said that for the betterment of society, you do this, you do that. No, though that, that is all preaching. I'm not saying it is wrong. But this is a practical thing. Adjust, adapt, accommodate, bear insult, bear injury, highest sadhana, highest yoga. You do this and you observe the quality changes. We might feel that if I do this, people will take advantage of it. No, they can't. They can't. If you are connected within yourself, then you have a greater strength. When you have a greater strength, the person ahead, he feels a shift and sooner or later, it won't be that every time you work with uh, a higher level, 
then things change no if it were so simple it was a different story no. that interaction he will or she will interact wrongly to you not in the same spirit but it is up to you to maintain your spirit and remain practical that is your sadhana you are improving that connection and a day comes when the strength increases to a level that people when they see you they say namaste ji aaiye ji they don't want to in on a different note there was one devotee of swami ji and this is a true life story huh? this is a true life story so uh he he is a doctor and um there are multiple administrative compliances which have to be fulfilled and when the government of authorities come to you for such requirements of uh, certificates you know what they expect i don't want to mention that and this inspector he was a master in that he came to this hospital and the in, in the lobby itself he had swami ji's photo and the uh, swami ji's photo is there puja area is there and that person he said he came and uh, this is a true life story huh and he said he he was you know as he walked into the hospital he he felt something he he, he said i am not able to understand he he told the doctor that i you know i am a person who will not work without the extra dollar i will never but the moment i came in here i don't know i am unable to take that extra dollar you will of course have to give me a little bit because i have to give it to others but that person who was always uh, who was addicted to that dollop would not go without that he said i just can't take any extra dollop from you how did that happen do you think it happened in one day no it takes a long time because this doctor he was true to his bhavana to true to his sadhana and over a period of time the energy in that place changed and when the energy in the place changes another person who comes there is a transformation which takes place that is the culmination then you know that you have attained perfection in that sadhana siddh honi padti hai just by practicing you don't become an expert you need to become a master and that is siddh you have expert, attained mastery over it this is the indication of siddh this is an example and when we practice this in our life you will see you will experience initially when you adjust people will take advantage of you but when you become established in that bhav i am doing it for my benefit and that energy changes around you deep within there is that shift which takes place it reflects on others even if they wish to something changes that is what happens that is the indication that you know you always want indication am i progressing in life is the, this is the indication how i become a better person that is how the society changes and yoga is the way for it and more than 50 years ago in the beginning when swami ji started the work of yoga entrusted to him by his guru swami shivanand ji he made a prophecy 
yoga will emerge as a powerful world culture which will change the course of world events that is a prophecy which swami satyananda made at a time when nobody was looking at yoga not today when yoga is a popular fashion and a fad no at a time when nobody would look at yoga at that time swami ji made that prophecy and today we are seeing that prophecy slowly coming true but how will it come true not not by external forces but by internal changes the first step towards that and the most powerful step towards that is living yoga what i said adjust adapt accommodate bear insult bear injury that is the principles of living yoga you are not practicing yoga for 1 hour or 2 hours or 3 hours no you are living yoga 24/7 by 365 by 100 all your life and when you do that one person does it and another person does it and a third person does it and a fourth person does it and a fifth person does it slowly the darkness the tamas starts dissolving the light starts coming up and then there is the dawn of a new spiritual consciousness at the moment there is darkness it appears that the spiritual consciousness is sinking lower and lower if you look around you look at the events and situations it appears that oh everything is going down but please remember that the darkest hour is before dawn and for us as individuals as yoga practitioners it is our duty to become the torch bearers of this philosophy of yoga and become a light we might be able to change only a fraction around us but hundreds of su such people coming together we can make a great change and when that happens it in calls that higher energy and that is the dawn of a spiritual consciousness that is what yoga will do there is no doubt about it the events over last 50 60 years clearly indicate that will happen in the beginning i was speaking about what shri swami ji had said he doesn't need any one of us no he can get it done with or without us perhaps without us he will be able to do it better because we are at times due to our limitations trying to not consciously but unconsciously perhaps we become small obstacles but he is giving us an opportunity to overcome our limitations by connecting to this great energy the energy of yoga which is the harbinger of the dawn of a new spiritual consciousness where society lives and exists for benefit of the individual external and internal both that is how we can make the society a healthy society that is how we can change the fabric of the society the fabric at the moment you know when you have a cloth and you weave the strings together you make the cloth if the strings are weak no mat no doubt that if 100 weak strings come together they are stronger than the individual but still relative they are weak if i can make that thin cotton strand into a steel strand the strength has gone exponentially higher and the strength of such a cloth is going to be much higher that is the healthy society that is the fabric which is being transformed into 
something much more powerful, automatically changing the society. That is the aim of yoga. And that is the prophecy which Guruji has made. And this is the way. Adjust, adapt, accommodate. Bear insult, bear injury. Highest sadhana. Highest yoga. That is the way for making that change. That's so beautiful, Swamiji. There are like, I mean, uh, I'm sure many of us will have certain questions, uh, but uh, I don't know. I mean, as of now, we are all in some phase, in some zone. So I think it will be very difficult for us to come out of it and ask immediately. But uh, I request people to you know, just try and put some questions. Um, yeah, we have one from Shailaja Ji. Excellent summary of importance of harmony among individual, social and spiritual dimensions. Highest yogic sadhana. Okay, that's not a question, but that's her uh, emotion. But it is a great lecture. Yeah, so we have from Santosh Ji. Ego is very strong. It kicks. How to dissolve it? Very nice. And, very true. Ego is very strong and it is very deceptive. Just when we feel that, oh, I have got the hang of the whole thing, it just transforms itself into a different form. And as you said, it gives you a good kick. Not easy. Not easy at all. The best way, the best way to do it, uh, to take care of it is not to fight it. You cannot fight the ego. It is way too powerful. Because ego is the reflection of the mind. And mind is very powerful. If you look at the structure of mind, it is manas, buddhi, chitta and ahankar. Ahankar is what we generally call as ego because that is how we have made all those filters. That is how we respond, react based on our past notions. And that is a very, very powerful factor and we cannot change it we are dealing with the mind we are not dealing with ego we are dealing with the mind because it is the mind which brings the ego out and so what is the best way the best way is not to fight the mind but the best way is to befriend the mind if that inspector who is coming to check you out he is coming with his draggers, daggers drawn. You can't do anything. But if the same inspector, he walks in and he says, oh, this is a nice place. I would like to help you. And he says, look, you are doing this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. Just correct all of this. Everything will be good. You have befriended the inspector and you have managed the situation. Mind, ego has to be managed in this manner. And how? To do that, the best way is two things. One is give the mind what it wants, what it likes the best. And I have said earlier also, actually I am just conveying what Swamiji has said, that mind likes best when it helps somebody else. You try it out yourself. Today, tomorrow, next time you get an opportunity, go out and help somebody where you don't have anything to benefit and walk away and see what happens in your mind. The mind is happy the whole day. You see anybody, you say, hey, you know, I did this. Feels so nice. Feels so nice. The mind is happy. The mind is always happy when it helps somebody else. So that is the second thing is you utilize it. You harness the ego to help somebody else. I will help 50 children. Okay, you are doing it out of ego. You are not doing it out of selflessness. But you are at least helping somebody else. And when you see those innocent smiles, your heart melts. That which your ego would not allow to do, suddenly those smiling children just creates a change within you. 
maybe it is temporary but it makes a change and over a period of time that change starts becoming permanent and without you knowing it without fighting even one blow with the ego with the mind you have started transforming the ego transforming the mind and using that energy to achieve good that is the secret of serve love give by which we can ad- attain this goal so that is the best way there are so many ways to work with the ego all the sadhanas basically are that but in today's times for people like us the simplest way is yoga of the heart serve love give yeah, we have uh, one question from seema ji what are the aspects of external growth external growth aspects of external growth they are physical they are mental they are emotional they are social they are professional so these are the aspects of external growth everything that we can see in the external world physically from you know a small baby we grow emotionally from being a dependent creature we grow independent and then hopefully we become interdependent mentally i have no idea but then i pick up skills and i grow socially i cannot adjust with people but then i am able to adjust professionally i have lit- little abilities but then i grow so these are aspects of external growth physical mental emotional social professional and interpersonal these are the aspects of external growth Uh, do we have time swami ji because vidya majundar ji has some event to narrate um yeah i mean we are already 8 minutes uh, beyond but in a quick uh, in 2 minutes if uh, she can uh, relate yes we can and then after that we should close because it shouldn't be too late okay. i will tell because swami swanand ji has said their insult their injury so i actually had a small experience about it that after when we say that bear injury and bear insult but beyond that they are not said once i was coming from rikya to my kerala by train and uh, the train came from patna when i got in the 2 3 minutes in rikya pit uh, my train uh, window seat was already reserved one person was sitting there with all his luggage uh, below the uh, my bench and he looked to be very adamant and very stern i said that okay this is my seat can you please move then he said no i am not going to move then i did not know what to do so i said this is my ticket <clears throat> then uh, some two three people uh, were, they were just looking on lookers i was all alone then slightly he moved then all his luggage was there so i told him that can you just move your luggage a bit so that i can put also my luggage there because i, I was there for four months i had also two bags so he just moved it only this much then i said can you move a little more then he said why i said because half portion is mine also he said is there any line like that and i said yes there is a line and all of you have uh, maybe uh, traveled by train i have traveled many times there is no line and when i said that i looked down there was a white line thick this white line and it was completely at the center i was really stunned at that line that person also looked everybody looked at the line everybody was stunned without saying a word he moved his uh, luggage uh, um, after that line i put my things and i was just so much overwhelmed that i cannot say what i felt that day so this was bear insult bear injury then we will help that is the i that mean is, a sign you see is, that that is the highest under- sadhana and what is the what is the result of the sadhana it is guru kripa it is ishwar kripa it is anugraha 
that is what happened you know that, that I, the, i immediately ran, i mean went along the bogey and looked at all other compartments nobody had that white line so that also i checked whether there is a white line nowadays everywhere, everywhere. no it was no. not there that is known as ishwar anugraha guru anugraha that is what yes. there when you do it out of purity of heart from a position of strength you could have easily gone and uh, spoken to the you know uh, ticket agent or called the yes. people and created a halla but no yes. you did it with this principle and you had great anugraha which comes beautiful very nice very nice beautiful thank you so much vidya ji um, yeah i mean there are so many questions i'm sure but i think uh, we are out of time and uh, and, and I also think, uh, i think this experience uh, which vidya ji has shared it tells everything that when you do it with sincerity of heart with purity of intention and with correct methodology then divine grace flows and when grace flows then all rules change so i think that sums up the whole story very beautifully and with this let us disperse trying to experience this and not just leave it as a, a good talk a good discussion but no let us take the sankalpa that from today let me try and implement little bit of this philosophy in my life and you will see that life starts changing life starts changing very rapidly haryom tat sat namo narayan jay please sit comfortably we'll conclude with shanti part eyes gently closed hands on your knees in tyan or chin mudra head neck shoulders back in a straight line awareness of your eyebrow center bring back the same image you had chosen in the beginning of the session maintain your connection with this experience take a deep breath in oh 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 असतो मद्गम तमसो मोतिर्गम मृत्योर्मात गमय स्वस्ति भवतु शातिर्भवूर्ण मंगल लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु ओम त्र्यंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धनम उर्वाकमिव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओं शाति 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 हैंड्स इन प्रणाम मुद्रा माता च पिता बंधुश्च सखा विद्या द्रविण सर्व मम देव सर्व मम देव सर्व mama deva deva hari hi om
Hari Om Tat Sat. Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om Tat Sat. Mm. Namo Narayan. Jai Ho. Namo Narayan.